Hi everyone, welcome to the BSc 1005. Uh, this is Dr. Asse, and today's topic is uh, introduction, syllabus introduction in chapter one to um, video. So let's get started. Um, so is, now I'm sharing actually my screen. You can see hopefully. Um, so first we are gonna, I'm gonna go over the syllabus first. Uh, quickly before actually starting the lecture. So this is a fully online class. That means actually we have a textbook like any other class. This is our textbook, which is online. We have a link in, in the canvas and also in the syllabus, which is called Concepts of Biology. It's an orange book. It's fully online book, actually. This is a hard copy version of the book. And this is free um, to download. and you should be starting the readings starting chapter one. So we have four modules. Uh, in these four modules, uh, basically chapter one, two, three, two point three, and three, and then um, we will finish module one. So uh, chapter one is introduction. Chapter two is chemistry of life, chemical base of life. Chapter two point three is molecules, and chapter three is cell. In this module, um, so we have um. So we have four chapters reading from our orange book. Make sure you start your reading. And you also welcome to use these PowerPoint slides. They are also in Canvas available to you. Um, also, we have four quizzes in this chapter, uh, in this module one. And then we have um, this is what I labeled there as DW, uh, which is discussion of the week. Zero, which is the attendance today. Make sure that you actually complete that. And then there is DW1, which is another uh, quick um, a discussion uh, uh, board entry you need to do. And also we have DWF later in coming um, uh, week five. So the number after the W is shows shows actually the week number. Um, so uh, we have four exams. And, and if you please read the syllabus, you will see each exam date and um, make sure that they, you actually put them in your um, in your um, calendar. So let's get started. Um, so uh, again, um, we are following um, these concepts of biology, which is which is basically a non-major biology BSc 1005. So okay, uh, how can you be successful in this class? Again, this is a fully online class. Um, everything is in Canvas that you need actually to reach. Um, basically, you have your book there in Canvas, freely available. Um, and you don't need to go to class, but you actually need to check your Canvas every um, multiple days a week and make sure that actually you read the announcements, you complete the discussion board um, entries in on time, and also look at the slides and combine them with your with your readings. Make sure you make some flashcards, concept maps every day, study the material, give your 100% effort and repeat. Like repetition is very, very important. And of course, there are, there will be YouTube videos, videos like this. And also I have a YouTube channel you can subscribe to. It's um it's called Dr. Hasi Explains. So you're welcome to subscribe to that too and combine all these um, and then you will do great. So let's get started. Chapter one uh, is our first chapter in, in our book and in our class, which is just introduction to biology. We have our student learning outcomes, we call SLOs uh, in every chapter, you can read them. Uh, basically, uh, biology is everything. It's biology is life, right? Biology is life. So it's so diverse and so large from uh, from a uh, microscopic level to the um, to the ecosystem to the biosphere level so this is golden age of biology so much happening in biology um, nowadays right um so you can work on cancer you can work on solar energy you can work on viruses you can work on genes genetic diseases and gene editing so many cool stuff in biology so uh, in biology, um, there are more than 1.8 million species plus species, but uh, they have some things in common. So there is no way to study every single species, but they have 
This is what we call properties of life. So you see some of them are listed here. You can see they have an order. They have a DNA that they share. There is a genetic code. They have growth and development. They have energy processing, reproduction, evolution. So these are some things that um, actually uh, connect these 1.8 million species. Okay, um, then there are different levels that we study. Uh, so they have, they have this hierarchy and levels, right? So biosphere in the world will be your highest point, right? And then starting point, well, we can start there, biosphere, and then biomes, and then ecosystems, and communities, and populations, which is population is the same species group, communities is different species, and then organisms, not species, and then organs, organ systems, organs, and then um tissues, cells, very, very, very important. We will spend a lot of time on cells. And then organelles, molecules, and atom. So this is the order we go. Um, so uh, we have chapters on the uh, is um, all these topics, separate chapters. This is eco uh, ecology we have in the very last module. We will cover a lot of this stuff. So ecosystems, basically we just seen as, as a level environment. Ecology is, is how actually the biological uh, species interact with their environment. We will talk about that. And then they live in ecosystems um, like a non with other non-living factors. We will talk about that. We will see nutrients, energy flow, that stuff. We will talk about in we have chapter uh, on cell. Um, so, but a little introduction here. Cells is very important level, which is lowest level that can be independent itself. Because there are organisms, they are actually single cell. Just one cell, whole organism. Okay, that makes it so, so important. So it's cells we divide in two groups, prokaryotic, eukaryotic. Prokaryotic are those small, uh, small, really simple ones like bacteria, eukaryotic like plant, animals, fungi kind of um, uh, groups. So you see here a eukaryotic, this large big cell here and prokaryotic, this small one. They have things in common. They have also separate stuff that they, they separate them from each other. Prokaryotic is very simple, no nucleus, smaller. There is DNA, but um, there, is, there isn't too many organelles. In eukaryotic, um, uh, they are larger, all these 15, 16 different organelles. Um, and and membranes very importantly membranes. Um, so all cells. One thing that combines all these one point eight million eight billion uh, species uh, is DNA, right? So so if the whole genome is book, DNA is basically is actually inside there. You can see here made made of four nucleotides A T C G A like T C like G, again, 1.8 million species. Okay, so, um, and there are three domains of life, which are uh, bacteria, archaea, which is a special bacteria, and eukarya. Um, eukarya is plantae, fungi, animalia, protists. These are under kingdoms under eukarya. Um, uh, so one thing that we are going to spend time in uh, module three is evolution, like uh, microevolution and evolution and adaptation. And uh, we will talk about um, Darwin's uh, experiments and his um, his observations and his his actually theory. Um, how actually uh, uh, same same group of organisms they live in a similar uh, near each other in island or nearby. Islands actually they have things more things in common so we will talk about those and they have they share maybe a more recent common ancestor it's very very important so um and again we will spend time on this in chapter uh, in module module number three uh, in evolution so uh, evolution talks about Darwin talks about natural selection but here is a human select human man-made selection called artificial selection uh, which is like you see here all these uh, all these plants you see cabbage Brussels sprouts kale broccoli cauliflower they look different than each other they actually very same species and they actually man-made with using artificial selection this is plant breeding 
Um, so, um, and, and also this chapter talks about um, scientific method. So scientific method is basically um, what we use to problem solve in science, like biology. So this is the technique we use. So it goes, start with a question, then a hypothesis, testing the hypothesis, finding data, and and look at data and then um, make a decision. You accept or reject the hypothesis. It's very, very important. Hypothesis is hard of this whole scientific method. Um, and so there are also theories in science besides hypothesis. The theories are supported much more broader scope and and then hypothesis. And also they are supported by so many, so many hypotheses. They are much stronger. Um, so and they are called theories. And there's some more information you can read, the uh, background information here. Um, and that's chapter, we have a little chapter review here. You can actually make sure that you read this and when you're studying chapter one. Okay, so this is briefly chapter one. So I wanted to make uh, add to the video. Um, I wanna go over a little chapter two. Since chapter one is just introduction, chapter two is more inorganic chemistry. Inorganic chemistry, okay? So um, this is called chemical basis of life, chapter two. So, okay, um, chapter two talks about different, well, of course, different elements, periodic tables, right? So periodic table, right? Again, this is, uh, this is from our orange book, which is uh, chapter two from the book, textbook, chapter two. Okay, so uh, here, so let's take a look at the periodic table. Periodic table, as you see, is really this whole chapter two is about periodic table, but specifically about, mostly about inorganic elements. But periodic table is like you can see is designed in a way, so there are groups, you can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And um, there is no eight, but it's really group zero, very last one. And then each group has these cards, look like cards, like boxes, right? So in each row. So this is a specifically designed, look like a card game, like you know, solitaire. Like you can see each column, very, very important. Okay, so, and each column has these um, rows. And the cards, each card is one element here. Okay, so uh, these are called shells. So this rows are shells, first shell, first row is first shell, second shell, third shell. But what is shell? Shell shows how many each, uh, this L, this group, uh, um, this row, how many, how many shell in their uh, atoms they have. This group, uh, group one, like hydrogen here has one shell. Group two, lithium, beryllium, two shells they have. And then sodium, magnesium, three, and goes on like that, potassium, four. Each column is important because if you are in the same column, that means you have some more things in common. Okay, so you are, you have similar chemical structure. And each of these guys, 118 elements, right? And then each element, like carbon you see here has two numbers small number, which is called atom atomic number, large number, which is called atomic weight or mass number. So 92 of these 118 elements are uh, naturally occurring. Um, um, out of 92, 25 are essential. That means, essential means for human and animals, uh, or could be plants, um, they cannot be substituted with another element. They are essential part of their life cycle, okay? So um, four of them, you can see here, oxygen, carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, they make 96%. And then um, there is these other large ones, but then there is smaller ones called trace elements. Um, trace means they are needed in very small amounts, trace amounts, including zinc, iron, copper, uh, manganese, these are, uh, these are uh, small trace elements. Um, so all these elements, 118, if they are elements because they are all unique, and um, and and they have um, they have basically atoms of that element. Each atom has three parts, as you know, proton, neutron, and electrons. So, um, so like carbon, you can see here, 
and also there are isotopes. We see one element in each box, but in the nature, there are more than one version of that element. So those different versions are called isotopes. Um, isotopes can be just normal isotopes or radioactive isotopes. Radioactive ones are the ones that are important and interesting because they decay and they, are, they have very high energy. So that's because of that, they are used in biology a lot, like in PET scans or some other um, uh, other diagnosis systems because they have very high energy. Uh, but they can be dangerous too in higher concentrations. Um, so these radioactive isotopes. Um, if you look a little more again, um, chapter, we are in chapter two, and these are this chapter is all about periodic table and mostly inorganic chemistry. Okay. Electron arrangements. Um, I talked about already. Um, an, um, an atom can have one shell, two shells, three shells, and each shell has a number of fixed um, uh, an electron on that, right? So the farther away the shell is, the greater the energy they have, okay? And if, the, if there are more than one shell, the outermost shell is the most important that we focus on, okay? Um, so outer shell, we look at the outer shell. Um, and um, if two elements get close to each other, they can make a molecule. Uh, but in order to do that, they need to make a bond between them and uh, connect, right? So these are called chemical bonds. If it is ionic bond, let's say like sodium and chlorine, you see here, um, sodium gives one electron, chlorine takes it. Now actually, they become uh, they became they they became sodium chloride, and this is an ionic bond. So ionic bond is giving and receiving. Okay, so one loses, one other one gains. So one one atom's loss is the other atom's gain. Okay, so but covalent bond is not like that. Covalent is um is about sharing the electrons. Like if uh, hydrogen is a good example, if there are two hydrogen atoms uh, nearby, they actually they can share these one electrons they have, and they become H two hydrogen gas. This is covalent bonds. Um, and this is, uh, we see more in organic molecules, like you see here, H2, O2, and CH4. So there are some examples. Um, and then there's hydrogen bond. Hydrogen bond, uh, which is basically polar, and if there is an hydrogen and an uh, and non-hydrogen, they actually hydrogen go and try to make a bond with this second uh, second molecules non-hydrogen. Um, we see them in uh, water molecules when several water molecules get close to each other, they make hydrogen bonds with each other, and then they pull each other up. Um, the chemical reactions basically, if you add more than one molecules and in a reaction, they can actually produce these products. This is chemical reaction. Um, so uh, there is also some information about water. Water is a molecule, but it's a very special molecule because it actually makes the life possible. So uh, water deserves a little more space here, which is very, very important. Water is very unique. Um, water has these very unique um, properties. Uh, water molecules stick together, one, two, uh, Temperature, uh, they resist the temperature. Um, they can freeze. And uh, if they do, we will see what happens. And then uh, they can dissolve almost anything, almost. They are universal solvent, okay? So when they stick together, this is called cohesion. We see that in a tree, um, how water from the zero in the soil go up to the 100 meter top of the sequoia tree. So uh, one of the forces is is this uh, cohesion. Um, but there is other things like surface tension. You see here how these insects can walk on, on water because surface tension of the water. Another good example. Um, waters can moderate the temperature. This is something, uh, there is heat and temperature here. Heat is um, amount of energy associated with movement of atoms and molecules in body of matter. Temperature is how intense the heat is. So this is this is a measurement. Okay. Um, 
So why I float? Okay, if you if a lake um if you from if, if you've been in cold places like Wisconsin, let's say you might see a lake actually frozen. But if you break um if you go ice fishing there and break it and you can look down there, you will see fish and water right under there. So but they don't mix. They are both water, but one is ice, the other one is liquid. But how ice is staying on top of the liquid? Because when water actually freezes, it actually changes its weight. It's much lighter. This is very, very interesting. That's why if the ice... Uh, so if it does not happen, whole lake will freeze and all the fish and other organisms will, will not survive if there was no such thing. Okay, Um. also uh, pH, right? pH is very, very important. pH is a negative log of um, hydrogen ion concentration. We have a pH scales from zero to 14. Seven is neutral and uh, that's pH seven. Zero to seven is acidic. Um, seven to 14 is basic. Anything acidic is like, well, like coffee, um, Grape juice or lemon juice. We know lemon is very acidic. Um, pure water is seven. Sea water is eight. Um, bleach is 13. And you can see it goes on like that. There are some molecules called buffers that they actually resist the pH change. They can be useful to add them to something so that they can buffer the pH so pH doesn't change. But why pH needs to stay same? Because pH actually important some reactions don't work unless pH is a specific pH level, like six, seven in the body, okay? Um, so uh, so if, uh, if, if a substance like water, it's called hydrophilic. If don't like water, it's called hydrophobic. Like oils, don't like water, they are very hydrophobic. Polarity is, um, when we're making a solution, you need to know the concentration. Volarity is how many moles of, of a, a, sol a solid in a solution. Mole is 6.02 6 times 10 to 23 molecules of that specific substance. This is also called Avogadro number, which is fixed. But molecular weight is not fixed. Every molecule is a different molecular weight. And this is something you don't need to memorize. This is always given to you. And this is just showing how you can make uh, one one mole, uh, one molar solution. You just ate, if you want to make one molar sucrose, you take 342 42 gram sucrose, add it to the one liter water, mix it. Now you have one molar concentration sucrose solution. Mm -hmm. uh, this is also this slide showing how you can make it in the lab. Uh, buffers, this is a uh, buffers also important in, in the oceans because oceans. With the uh, with the global warming and CO two in, in CO two levels increasing, oceans get more acidic, and that can actually affect the whole life in the oceans. So CO two dissolves in the seawater, and forms something called carbonic acid. This is called ocean acidification. So um, there is a little information about the carbon, one specific element here. Um, carbon is basically one element so so important it actually has its own uh, its own uh, chemistry called organic chemistry so he so far we talked about inorganic chemistry but carbon is organic chemistry so here are some examples here um this comes from the one uh, hypothesis organic chemists find they reject this old hypothesis called vitalism and they accepted what's called mechanism, or which means all natural phenomena, including process of life, governed by same physical and chemical laws. You can see carbon is the heart of carbon chemistry or organic chemistry. But other elements involved too, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, sulfur, phosphorus, also involved in organic chemistry. Um, so how can we make 6 million organic compounds with just carbon and a few other elements on it? Well, there are some unique things in organic chemistry. So like you can see uh, the way we can type them, you can type it as CH4 methane or make a stick like C4H or a space model like this. Um, 
Again, these are the other elements, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, and carbon also involved uh, besides, uh, besides the carbon. So carbon is the king, but uh, there are three other, three other elements involved in this. Okay, so uh, what's so special about these elements and why what happens when we see them in, um, in like this chapter? They can make hydrocarbons, like carbon and hydrogen, like long hydrocarbons, like you see here in these tails. Um, they are very diverse, but how can we? They are, uh, there are 6 million plus of these compounds. So you can see here, they can be just linked, they have more carbon or less carbon. They can have a short, long uh, chain. They can branch, no branch. They can double bond or single bond, or they can make these rings. Um, uh, so there is something called isomer. So uh, these car uh, in organ in, or in organic chemistry, there are structural isomers, like if you have no branch or branch, there are cis trans or geometric isomers. Let's say this X X is at the top, a hydrogen hydrogen at the bottom. If if this switch hydrogen and X with uh, uh, connected a double bond. These are called cis-trans isomers. And very interesting one, enantiomers, which is, um, we see this in animals and, and, and human, right? Right. We have two hands, like, so if you put them on top of each other, they, they look like each other, but this is right-handed, this is left-handed. This is called enantiomer. So molecules can have enantiomers or mirror, in their mirror image of each other, but they are right-handed and left-handed. Okay, so, um, and why this is important? Well, when it's uh, if you if you if you are designing a drug in and if you're working in a, a pharmaceutical company, so there are same similar molecules, same molecules, but only one can be effective. The other one is not effective. Like ibuprofen, you can see this S is effective, but R is not. Even though these are two mirror image of each other, uh, this is just one example. So only one. Maybe right-handed one is the biologically active, but not the left-handed, or vice versa, depending on depending on the um, depending on the molecule. Okay, so there are also chemical groups that can be added to these uh, these molecules. These are called functional groups. There is a list of them in your book and also here in slides. Like OH is called hydroxyl. If you add it to the compound, it's called ethanol. Like in this case, carbonyl is CO like they are called ketones or aldehyde, acetone or propanol is an example. Carboxyl is COOH, like acetic acid you see here. Amino is nitrogen, like glycine, which is an, uh, which is an amino acid. We see NHAA2, you see here. Um, so federal is SH, like cysteine, another, another amino acid. Phosphate, easy to remember, 1P4 oxygen. You can see here POOO, glycerol phosphate, and methyl is CH3. If you add these, you actually make a diverse and new molecule if you add it to the any molecule. Okay, so make sure you study these. And these are just separately explaining in each slide. And ATP. ATP is very, very important because it's the is the energy currency of the cell. So and that's why we will say how many ATP, 36 ATP, 25 ATP, 2 ATP, 1 ATP, so that you pay, you get an, a, a work done in the cell. So um, ATP is actually made by ADP. ATP stands for adenosine tri, like triphosphate, tri. Um, it's made of adenosine diphosphate, two, plus, uh, energy that's actually if you use it that can come out like this so this energy is used and then this is recycled so there is a chapter two review here basic chemistry in organic chemistry water and carbon so and ph make sure that you study this and complete the, um, the quizzes so uh, basically uh, these are the chapter one and two so i'm going to stop here um, so uh, this this is the end of the chapter one and two uh, video. Um, best of success. See you in the next video.